Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mod Point 3 Garage. Uh, I am Chris, and today we are working on our Dana 20. So I have this one came out of a 73 Bronco, which we are restoring right here. We are in the middle of drivetrain right now, so we already got the 4R70W built. Uh, now it's the Dana 20. And then next, it'll be finishing up on the 347 Stroker that we're building. So subscribe if you haven't already. It's going to be a great build series. So let's get right to this, and I'll make it as concise as I possibly can, because I know when you're rebuilding a Dana 20 or any other mechanical piece on your vehicle, you like videos that are concise, quick to watch, uh, without a lot of extra stuff in it. And to help, I'm going to put timestamps in the description of every major step, so that if you have to go back or forward, or you just want to see one part, you can actually click on that timestamp, and it'll fast forward in the video or rewind in the video to kind of make it more concise. So here you go, Dana 20. So we've already prepped our case by pulling it apart uh, through some four blue on it just because that's what I had. Cleaned all of the gearing and shims, casings and stuff like that over here. And then not to mention that also with this Dana came a rebuild kit, BK20F. I believe you can get this from a lot of different suppliers. So I'm going to be using this rebuild kit to rebuild it. And it comes with almost all of the running parts every bearing that you need and every seal that you need. So this is a really good one to get. It's not very expensive, but everything else has been completely cleaned. So it is ready to be assembled. Now, typically speaking, you're gonna build the rotating assemblies first. Okay, first up is the rear drive output shaft. We're gonna build this assembly, but we're not gonna put it in. So that's this assembly right here. And I've also got the gaskets and the seal that are gonna go with it, just in case this is Part of it as well so this is the bearing retainer right here and I have the race just sitting here just because I was just fitting it to the side of that you've got a race that's gonna go on on the inside and on the outside and then you've got your gear got your rear input shaft you've got your output shaft you've got your bearing here which with this one just so I can give you the numbers the race is two five eight two one that goes to this the bearing is 25877R. This is your speedometer drive gear. Underneath this bearing, I've got my shim pack, and my shim pack has four shims in it. And it's gonna go on top of that. And then you've got your bearing, and your bearing race is 125245, and your actual bearing is 15117. So those are all gonna go right on there. When putting these on, they don't go on super tight. You can use a press. You can hammer them on if you want to hammer them on, or you can actually heat them up. The actual bearing, you can heat it up with a heat gun, and uh, and it'll slide right onto the shaft without too much of an issue. I might mix it just a little bit just to try all three methods. Um, I've used two of the three methods, and, and it's worked for me, So, but I've, I've never heated up the bearing to put it on, but I know that uh, it can be done. You can heat this up with a heat gun or with a torch. I prefer a heat gun, but my heat gun on the fritz right now, so I gotta go buy a new one. So we're gonna go with the tools that we have, which in this case is a torch. I'm gonna place this on right at the top there and just like that. Now, if you are heating the bearings up to get them on, you are gonna have to wait a few minutes or cool off the shaft because when you slip this on, it's gonna be so hot, this shaft is gonna swell and as tight as this slip fit is on this speedometer gear, it won't slide on very easily until it's cool. Ugh, there it goes. Yeah, it's gonna take some coaxing to get it on, but, but it'll go on. Then your four shims, in this case, you may have four shims, you may have three shims. I have four shims. Make sure these are all going in the same direction. And then I'm gonna go ahead and slide those on there as well. And that's as far as we're going to go on this particular buildup because we need to put the races for these in the cup. And then we're going to bring the rear output shaft housing and we're going to put the race that goes to this bearing in here as well. And it's going to go on the back side right here or on the inside facing out. And then this is going to go and turn straight down into here. So let's go ahead and pound this in. And in order to drive this in, we are going to use a seal driver. Just make sure you have it flush. So it's going in even, it's going in great. All right, we are in all the way. Then we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna put this race in as well. 
is this guy right here and the race we're going to be using is 15245 and the bearing is 15117 all right and then we're going to pound this in Here it change. All right, we're gonna heat this bearing up. Uh, I could probably just drive it on with a socket, but we're gonna we're gonna do this a little bit differently. I'm gonna heat it up and I'm gonna pound it on with a socket so I can get it really good and on there. All right, we're just gonna slide it down in. All right, we got it partially in. We're gonna drive it on the rest of the way with the socket. Yeah, very nice. End play on this should be three to five thousandths. I'm probably not even going to measure it at this point because it's so it's so tight. So I'm going to go ahead and put the gasket. There's a felt gasket that comes in the kit. Make sure you stick that down in there first, and then we're going to drive on our seal. Just make sure that you've got it pointing in the right direction, which is so that the yoke can go right down in there, past the flange right there. So we're going to stick that in there. We have new Dana 20 yokes that will go on here. And the reason why you want to probably buy new yokes is they're either not very expensive, they're less than 50 bucks a piece. But when you get road grime into the seal right here, the seal acts like a, basically a grinder and it grinds a small lip right in here, which will actually cause it to leak. So that's pretty much the only reason why you need a new one, and that's the reason why we have a new one. All right, before I put this actually in the case, I'm actually going to put some uh, lubrication on this right here just so I don't damage the seal and doesn't start up dry. So there we go. I'm going to slide that on. All right, and then we got a new nut and a new washer. It's I would recommend getting new nuts and new washers. They're very inexpensive and they're not completely round, so they, it acts like a torque nut. So we're going to take the washer and just because I've seen it on several forums that if you put some RTV on that before you slip it down, it'll help keep from weeping. We're going to go ahead and do that. And you're going to torque this to 125 to 150 foot pounds. All right. So I've tightened it to 125 foot pounds. End play, which is back and forth versus preload which you measure uh, by spinning it with a torque wrench. The end play is three to five thousandths. If you're gonna be measuring preload, you want two to seven inch pounds. Now, if it's tighter than you want it, I have four shims in this pack. You can disassemble this, drive the bearing out by using a punch right here and drive it out and add more shims. If you add more shims, that will create more end play and reduce the amount of preload in this assembly. Then if it is too loose, if you have either too much in play or you're not even registering on an inch pounds torque wrench, you can actually decrease the amount of shims by taking a shim out, reassembling it and checking that. Next, we wanna put our shift reels in. We're gonna grab our seals first. I grab any socket that works, but I'm gonna grab a 19 millimeter socket. Try to these in as straight as you can. After you put the seals in, we're going to put the shift rails in. So for the shift rails, this is a J style shifter. You can have the T, which is an earlier case. Most T's come with two detent rods. Some J style cases, from what I've heard, come with two. Most come with one. This one came with one. So I've got my one detent rod. I've got my two detent balls, my two detent springs. One is noticeably heavier than the other. And the way that I determined that was I just put a little spring test to it, just like that. And I can tell this is the heavier of the two. And, and that will make a difference when you go to put those in. Plus your two shift forks. Your two shift forks should have your Allen headed keepers in them right there. And then the tool that I'm using is a quarter inch drive with a long shaft, quarter inch socket, and a 3 16 inch hex on it. And that's what, what I'm going to use to, to drive these in. And the lubricant I'm going to use is going to be assembly lube. So because mine's a J-style shifter, I've got my two rods right here. This one, which has the long shift rod on it, is going to be on my left. And the one with the short is going to be on my right. And their orientation is going to be similar to that right there. 
when it's all said and done. And that means that this little cutout right here, which is an ovular cutout on both sides, you can see that one there, is going, they're going to be facing each other so that that detent rod, which goes right there, is right in the middle of the two of them, just like that. Get this lubricated up, and as it comes through, I'm gonna go back and do the same thing. I'm just gonna take the excess that wiped off of here and put it on the end of that so that it has plenty of lubrication. Now that we've got our case tilted up, we've got one of the shift rods in. Both of these shift forks are the same, so I'm going to just, uh, to just do a little bit of lubrication there just to make it easy for that rod to slide through. And the actual, the actual Allen key is going to face where the shift rod comes in. And we're just gonna slide this over the shift rail just like that. And you'll notice as it comes through that there is a hole right there in the shift rail. We're gonna slide this over that hole and this is where we're gonna start wrenching. I'm gonna drive this Allen key down just a little bit and once you get it over the top, you should feel it to where it can, there it goes. And then once you've got it in, you'll see it flipping up and down just like that. There is no doubt when you got that hole correct. Shift fork number one is in. The detent rod, a little bit of lubrication on that. It's gonna go in the back hole right here. The front hole does not have a secondary hole on the other side. The back hole has a hole on this side and a hole on this side where we're gonna put plugs on both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide that in there and then push it in with a screwdriver or something to get it all the way in. We're gonna take our second shift fork. We're gonna place this oval back the other direction right there. Slide that down in, bring it back out just a little bit. Grab the second shift fork facing the rod. Slide that on and then work that rod straight through. Second hole in the shift rod is gonna go right over the top. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this one. We're gonna tighten down the Allen screw just a little bit, just enough to where we can search for the hole in the rod and I'm in. I can actually feel it moving. Start tightening it up. So now both of your shift forks are in correctly and that's really the orientation that they're gonna go in right there. Now we have the front input shaft. The front input shaft is a little bit more complicated than uh, the rear input shaft. So we'll go through this. I kind of blew everything out so you kind of sell all the parts. Uh, I did not take this apart so it took a lot of research to try to figure out for a J-shift case, which parts went with the front input shaft, so I'm gonna let you know. So we have the bearing retainer cup, and we have, in my case, three spacers here. I wish we're gonna give the preload on the bearing, and then the bearing will go right onto the back of the shaft here, which we're about to put on. So the bearing will go onto the shaft, and the bearing race will actually go into the case. So that's going to be one of the first things we do here in just a second. And then you have the front input shaft, you have the sliding gear, which is this guy right here. And then there's this gear right here, which goes on and actually stops right on the front input shaft. And you can see right here where those splines actually lock at some point too, so that when this gear slides all the way over, it becomes one unit, but when it rolls back, it's independent. So you have that going on there. Then you're gonna have a spacer, which is, this guy right here, this spacer is going to go on all the way there. Then the bearing is going to go on. The bearing is going to go on just like this. So we're going to drop the bearing in and press it on. And then we're going to, this race actually goes into the case. So that will go there. And then there is another, on a J-shift case, there is another spacer. So this spacer slides on over this bearing. And then you put your yoke on just like this. Okay, so that's the way that this looks on a J-shift case. And remember that when you're putting in your other bearing retainer on the front, that you've got a felt gasket that goes in and then your standard gasket. The gasket goes in one way so that the flange goes 
through the gasket without pulling it back. So that'll go in just like that. The bearings that you're gonna be using with this kit is gonna be 14116. Both bearings are the same size bearing on a J-Shift case. The races are 14276. This bearing can be pressed on. It can be hammered on with a socket or a bearing and seal driver, or it can be heated and dropped on. And so I'm gonna heat it and drop it on. Should be hot enough. Go ahead and slide this on. And then I'm going to grab a socket also because now we're flush here, but there's still just an ever so slight gap in there. And I'm just going to give it a couple of taps. Make sure it's all the way down. That made the difference right there. Okay, now we're going to start at the back of the case right here. And you're going to notice the same spacing hole right there. So you know that's, that's the rear right there. So the sliding part is actually going to go in the back towards the back here and then you're going to take your front gear and lock it in just like that and then both of these for no reason and I'm actually just going to put some assembly lube in here just to keep it from being dry slide my shift fork up these are going to go right down in there just like that I'm going to take the front output shaft and I'm going to slide the front output shaft all the way in like that and then I'm going to take the race slide this around to get the race where I want it and now we're going to pound this race in right here I'm going to dry fit all of the spacers and everything on here I'm not going to torque these I'm just putting them in place right now All right, now we're gonna flip it over. Okay, and then we're going to put our spacer in. And now we're gonna take our bearing. And our bearing's gonna go on tapered towards the top. And then we're gonna drive this uh, race down in there. Now we're gonna make sure we put our second spacer for J-shift cases over the top of that. And then we're gonna put our race on top of that. This race goes in pretty easy, so you shouldn't have to really do much to get this in. All right, now we're gonna set this uh, case over to the side. We're gonna take our bearing retainer, felt gasket, put the felt gasket in. Make sure that we have the uh, the gasket going in the right direction, which means the flange should be pointing down here because you're going to be sliding in uh, the yoke through here and you don't want it to pull that up, so that goes down. Now you're going to notice that if you put this race in flush, which is what I did, this bearing retainer has a flange that actually sticks down. And that's what's going to give you a little bit more preload. So I'm just going to give it a, a few taps. Okay, so now we've got it sitting pretty flush, so I'm gonna pull that off now. Clean off the mating surfaces a little bit with some brake cleaner. Yeah, I'm gonna put some uh, gasket seal, real thin coat. Don't need to go super heavy. I'm using the orange, which is high temp, but you can use the black, which is more oil resistant. All right, gasket goes on. We're gonna do the same thing again. All right, and then our flange is going to go on. I'll put on our bolts here. Torque these down to 25 to 35 foot-pounds. Now that we're uh, going to be putting our bearing retainer in here, we have our three spacers. We cleaned everything with uh, brake clean. And then you can either use an R you can go bare, which I don't think anybody does. You can use an RTV between each one. Uh, or you can, a lot of people are using some sort of a spray adhesive or something like that in order to bond them. I did the Dana and the Bronco to be named later with RTV, so I'm going to do this one with some spray adhesive and we'll see which one looks better over the long haul. And a light spray. Ooh, this stuff is sticky. Look at that one on. Slide this on with the bolts, get them all lined up. Torque that down to 25 to 35 foot-pounds. 
Okay, now we're going to the uh, rear output shaft. So we're going to go ahead and put in our gear here. And uh, I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the front one. For no particular reason, I'm gonna put some uh, pre-assembly lube in there. Okay, first you're gonna take your shift fork for your rear output shaft and you're gonna pull it all the way forward. That'll open it up to where you can get the gear in a little easier. And then take your gear, you're gonna slide it where the slider is towards the rear output shaft yoke. Slide that in and over. We're gonna spin this around so we can take a look at it from the front. We're gonna do the same thing with this gasket area that we did with the last ones. We're gonna just clean this off with some brake cleaner. Some gasket on there. All right, that covers that. Gasket on, the gasket only goes one way. Do the same thing again. All right, we get some, uh, all right, we got a little bit of gasket on there. All right, and then we just gotta match it up. Okay, and then I'm gonna take something in there and I'm just gonna kind of move this around. And it'll get that gasket to line up correctly. And then slide it right on. All the holes match up, it only goes on one way. And you've got four short bolts and one long bolt. And then torque down to 25 to 35 foot-pounds. Now for the idler gear. And in this one, uh, you have three spacers. There's going to be one on the outside, one in the middle, and then one on the outside, just like that. And then you're going to have two rows of roller bearings in between those. Plus, then you also have two thrust washers right here, which go on the uh, inside of the case. There's actually a key on this end. You'll see a key in there. The keys go in there and then the copper services actually face the gear just like that. But we'll, we'll go to that in just a second, but let's build this first. I'm actually going to take some gear lube and get this all lubricated. Stick this in there and then I'm going to just saturate this thing with gear lube on the inside and then I'm just going to start placing them. Go all the way down to the bottom. And I'm just going to literally just start laying them in just like this. It's literally this easy if you do it like this and just have it laying flat. And then the last one when it slides in will feel tight. And you'll know you have it. And then I'm going to take another, once I get that first row in, I'm going to take some more grease. And I'm going to go right around the edge of those things and really kind of cake them in together. Then I'm going to drop another spacer in. And then I'm going to lubricate the walls again. And then I'm going to start all over again. Then we're going to put some more lubrication on here. Make sure these bearings aren't going to fall out. Then we're going to put the top spacer on, just like that. And now we're good there, put a little bit of lubrication on the outside just because my fingers are nasty. And then we're going to roll this off the side so that I can get my fingers underneath it. And there you go. Just like that, we have everything packed in there just fine. Now I've already got one of the spacers in. If you lubricate these thrust washers with some grease, some uh, assembly grease, and slide them into the notch that assembly grease will kind of help hold that washer onto the side so that you can slip it in there. You're going to place this to where this side of the gear is going to be going towards the rear of the case. You're actually going to be driving in the shaft in this direction. I'm just going to use a zip tie and give myself something to give myself something to hold on to here. All right, let's try this again. Nice and gentle. I'm actually going to keep my finger in there. I'm just going to slowly work this down. There it goes. Slowly work this down. Then I just put the yoke on the uh, input shaft and I'm just kind of slowly rolling it just like that and it's going to roll it it's going to roll it right into place and i don't want to over rotate 
look inside where the, the uh, idler shaft is going to go and make sure I don't over rotate it. I'm just going to go just a little bit more until I get right there. And then your idler shaft, normally I would lubricate this so even though I've got a ton of lubrication on this as it is and then it'll lubricate itself as it goes through. So I'm going to kind of line that up with the way that the lock's going to be which is about right there. Then I'm going to start tapping. I'm going to stick my finger in there just to make sure everything is lining up correctly. It should just go right in like butter, right past every one of those. Nice and easy. Uh, before I start going through the second part of the case, I'm going to make sure that we're lined up with where our lock's going to be. I'm actually going to clock this just a hair. All right, I am happy with that right there. So we're going to knock it the rest of the way in. All right, that's flush right there. Slide that lock in there. All right, then we're going to put the lock in. Tighten that down. And then remove your tie strap. Okay, now we're ready to add the detent balls, which I already did. I put one ball in this side and one ball in this side. So in a J-shift case, they're going to go into the back holes back here. And then uh, there are two springs, and uh, these are the springs that actually came with it. But one is a little bit harder than the other. Doing a, a kind of a, just a, a general press test. This one seems harder than this one. So this one's going to go in the front shift rail, which is the shift rail that mechanizes the front drive shaft, which is this guy right here. So this shift rail goes to this. And then I'm going to put the softer one in the back side here, where the rear shift rail is. And slide that in there. Put the plugs in and tighten those down. And then I'm also going to put in this front plug as well. I'm just going to tighten these to tight. All right, then we're going to put on our drain plug. I'm going to put some uh, some blue Loctite on that just to seal the threads. All right, and then to stick that plug back in, you're just going to use the head of a socket like that right there, square plug, and uh, then just feed it in. We're just going to take the filler plug. I'm not going to fill it right now, but I'm just going to put the filler plug in here just so that we can cross this off the list of things that we are going to do. And we're going to tighten the front drive shaft yoke. So we slid the yoke on there. Okay, and similar to the last drive shaft yoke, we're going to go ahead and put some RTV on there and slide that in. And then we're going to run this up to 125 foot pounds. Slowly at a low angle, like this. And then the second to the last thing that you're going to do is. You're going to put some gasket maker on here. Put your gasket on there. Gasket maker again. And then you're going to put on your bolts. Now I'm not going to do that to mine right now because I still have a ways to go on my build. So I may want to get back in there for some reason. So I'm just going to put the bolts in. All right, now our Dana 20 is rebuilt. The only thing I didn't go into is the input shaft because if you are going to be putting this back into a stock application or an application where you're not changing the transmission, then you're going to assemble uh, the input shaft the same way you did with this assembly uh, in order to get it in here. We actually are changing ours to a 4R70W and so therefore we switched our adapter as well. Uh, this adapter video will be in the next video. Uh, it's not all that hard to put in, it's gonna be a short video. Uh, so we'll go through that in another video and then also 4R70W video, check that out. Please give us a like if this was at all helpful. We are restoring several Broncos in these videos, so hit the notification bell because we have lots more videos coming up on our restorations. That's a wrap for my point through garage. Thanks for hanging out with us.